He's a mighty God. God is a mighty God. He's worthy of our praise. Oh, we give you glory, Father. You're mighty. You're worthy. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. We magnify your name. We glorify you, Father. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. You're a mighty, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we give you glory, Father. We give you praise, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. We glorify you, Father. Oh, you're worthy of our praise. You're worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Oh, you're the all-sufficient one. You're more than enough. You see us through. We give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. He said, don't think about those. Don't. He said, God knows you have need of all that stuff. But he said, just seek first. Say first. first. The kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Yes. And all these things shall be added unto you. That's you see, right. we don't have to worry about the things of life if we'll just trust God and serve God and obey God with all our heart. Amen. And then he's got our, he's got our backs. Yes. In Hebrews chapter 11, it says this, Without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Now everybody, most people believe that God is. God is almighty. God is more than that. But... You also have to believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If we will seek God, we will be found of him. If we'll press into God, well, he'll be found of us. If we forsake God, he will forsake us. That's what the Bible says. Yes. If we press into God, he'll be found of us. But if we walk away from God, he'll walk away from us. I had someone contact me one time. They said, well, God, I thought God walked away from me. And they'd gotten into adultery. Well, I said, God didn't walk away from you. You walked away from God. That's what happens when you get into adultery. You've walked away from the life of God that was in you. That's what it says in Hebrews chapter 10. It says, we should, we should not forsake the assemblings of ourselves together as a manner of some. Is it even, especially as you see the day approaching, we see the day of Christ's return approaching, right? So we should be more diligent to go to church and then congregate together so that we can encourage one another yes. to good works. Yes. For if we choose to sin after we've come to the knowledge of the truth, there remains therefore no more sacrifice for our sins. In other words, the sacrifice Christ provided for you no longer remains on your life. Why? Because you've chosen to walk back your old ways. You've chosen to, you who've been delivered and been set free, you've chosen you who were washed, you've chosen to walk back into your old ways. Peter said it's been better if you never known the way of righteousness yeah. than to turn from the holy way of God. Amen. said the second state is worse than the first. You've been better not even to know him. To know Christ than to know him and walk away. He said it's like the proverb where the sow goes back to its wallowing again and, and the dog eats its vomit. Is that yeah. <laughs> But it's worse to know God and to walk away than it is to, to never have known Him. That's why Jesus told the church in the, New, in the book of Revelations, He said, I would that you were hot or cold, because if you're lukewarm, I'll pew, spew you out of my mouth. He said, I'd rather you be hot for me or, or cold or not where you know, know, when you know you're lost. You see, people that think they're saved but they're living evil, they're, they're the hardest ones to reach because they say, I'm saved. I've been saved. Well, it doesn't matter what you've been. Are you right now are you living for God? That's right. Are you right now living for God? Because every day is a day of salvation. Every day is a day of deliverance. Thank you, Lord. Every day. Give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We need to walk in God's ways. And what we need to do is we need to be content in whatever state we're in. Amen. 
We get to worrying about stuff, about stuff that never is ever, never. Now, sometimes it might happen, but most of the time, things we worry about never, ever happens. But if we'll just be content in whatever state we're in, as long as we're serving God and obeying God and doing His ways, like I voted yesterday, and some of the, and some of the things that I voted for didn't happen. <coughs> Most of them did, but but uh, I don't worry about that. I voted for righteousness. Amen. That's what we need to do. We, when we vote, we just need to vote for righteousness. We just need to lay, lay it at the Lord's hands. Amen. We just need to lay it at the Lord's feet. Don't worry about it. Oh, but you don't understand. Oh, I understand. Give it to God. Amen. This is the thing. Are we, have, we live in a nation right now where we have murdered over 60 million babies since 1973. 60 million since 1973. Over 60 million. That's bigger than the population of many countries. Over 60 million people. Now we wonder why we don't have the money for Social Security because we've killed all those kids, all those people. And, they, and what they do, Social Security, it, it's on the people who's alive right now that's paying the bills for, for the people who's on Social Security. So we don't have that money because we've killed off a generation yeah. of our kids. It's a terrible, terrible thing. And God will judge our nation. <coughs> but if we serve God, then God's got our backs. You know, God turned Judah and the nation of Israel over to their enemies for them to come against them all through different periods of time. They served God for a while and then they turned away from God. And then God turned them over to their enemies. To their enemies. Matter of fact, one time, King David, God gave him a choice because he had disobeyed God. He said, well, do I just put a plague on you, you guys or do I turn you over to your enemies? David said, David said, oh, you're a merciful and gracious God. I'll let you choose. So God slaughtered thousands of Israelites with a plague. He thought he would be nice to him and just let it go. God judges people. The thing is, God will judge a nation because of unrighteous leaders. So that's why it's important for us to put righteous leaders in place. Yeah. But even if we get, if, if, an, if God lets another country take us over, which could happen, because God's a righteous judge, we still, as individuals, we can still rise to the top. We're going to read some scriptures about that tonight. Now, turn with me to the book of Daniel. Daniel uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Daniel was a prophet of God. He loved God. But in his lifetime, Judah, oops, Judah and Israel, they had forsaken God. And they not done things his way. And so God turned them over to uh, Babylon. Let them Babylon take them over. Daniel chapter 1. Thank you, Father. Verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jeroboam, Jeroakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem to besiege it. And the Lord gave Jeroboam, king of Judah, into his hand. In other words, God allowed his enemy to destroy, to, to capture them, to take them as slaves, okay? To take to Judah into his hand and part, and part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, to his God. And he brought the vessels unto the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, and children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such, and had an ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach in the learning in the tongues of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily portion of the king's meat or the king's food, and at the, and at the wine which he drank, and so nursed them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. 
Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, which they be, God changed their names. I mean, they changed their names to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Unto whom the princes of the units gave his names. For he gave Daniel, he gave Belshazzar, and Hananiah he gave, he, of Shadrach, and Mishael of Meshach, and Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat or the king's food, nor with the wine which he drank. In other words, even if even if we're somewhere where God, where the people tell you you have to do this, and it's gonna you, it's gonna be something that's gonna defile you. You need to abstain from that. When Kathy and I went to uh, people's house one time a long time ago, and she used to be a, a nun, but she wasn't a nun anymore. She was married, and they they, they served food, and they gave us a glass of wine, and I don't drink wine. So, so I said, I don't drink, and they got offended. I don't care. I still don't drink. When I was growing up in high school, I was a Christian, and somebody offered me a beer. I said, I don't drink beer. I'm a Christian. Amen. I just make a stand. Yes. God will honor that. If you'll make stands, then you don't say, well, this is peer pressure. No, God will honor you if you'll honor him. Amen. If you'll honor God, then he'll honor you. And so they said, no, we don't want to do that. God had brought Daniel, and now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord, the king, who hath appointed your food and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse likening than the children which are of your sort? Then they shall make me endanger my own head to the king. In other words, he said, the king may cut off my head if I don't do this. Because he told me to do it. Set Daniel, set Daniel, set over Daniel, Hananiah, and Mishaiah, and his right. Prove thy servants. Now, David, Daniel said, Set us and prove thy servants. I beseech thee ten days. He said, Just try it ten days and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then our, let our countenance be looked upon before thee and the countenance before the children that eat the portion of the king's food, as thou seest, dealt with thy servants. And so he consented to them in this manner and proved them ten days. At the end of the ten days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the king's portion of king's meat or food. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge How'd they get knowledge? God gave them knowledge. Because they honored God, God's favor was upon them. And God gave them knowledge and skill in learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. You see, that is giftings of God. Yes. You see, God imparts his favor. If you'll just trust God and obey God and make stands for godliness then God's favor will be upon you. Then God's blessings will be upon you. Then God will impart giftings and anointings to you that you don't have no ability to do. When I was young, when I was a teenager, now I've been serving God almost all my life. But when I was a teenager, I mean, I served God. And we, I sang in churches and my cousin sang with me. And, and uh, my cousin was a great, he was great with harmony. But I couldn't sing harmony at all. But I really had a desire to sing harmony. So one day I just said to the Lord, I said, I sure would like to be able to sing harmony. That's all I did. I said, I sure would like to be able to sing harmony. And bam, just like that, God gifted me. He anointed me to be, to be able to hear harmony. <clears throat> so that's still today. I still hear harmony. When, when songs are going, I mean, I hear harmony. That's I want to sing harmony because that's a gift of God. Now I can sing the, the melody and stuff, and I still can but I love to sing harmony because that's the gift of God that's in me. When I was just a kid, before I got born again, in first and second grade, I was, I was unable to learn to read. And uh, they told my parents that I was mentally retarded uh, and I'd, I'd never really probably be able to read. And, and uh, 
So between second and third grade, something happened to me. Now they did send me to a tutor between second and third grade, but something else happened to me. I got born again. When I got born again, this is what I believe. I believe God imparted special abilities to me through to, to be able to have extra knowledge and understanding of that stuff. And they tested me in third grade. I learned to read between second and third grade at the tutor. But they tested me in third grade, and they told my parents I had a near genius IQ. And then later on when I took IQ tests before I went into the Army, I had such high IQ. I mean, in like some of the testing, there was like, I was either 98th or 99th percentile. And I found out the 99th percentile means I was actually smarter than everybody than 100. <laughs> that was, I was smarter than 99% of people in, in that area. So, so, But that's just God, God's gifting to me. So I can like see stuff and I can just remember it. Like I can remember numbers that I see. I can, I can like picture, it's like a photographic memory or something, but God imparted that to me. So that's not anything that, I remember my uncle David, he got born again and he started coming to our church. And he, and he said, man, I remember you when you were a little kid and this, this has to be God. Because he knew that I was dumb as a rock. <laughs> He said, this has got to be God. Because I couldn't even talk in front of people. But when God called me to preach, then I knew I could preach. Because I knew God. We need to know God. We need to pray and get to really know God. If we, if we get, become God's friend, then we can trust God. Hallelujah. So this, was King, this is Daniel. And God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among all that were found, and among all that there were found none, like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they stood before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding, the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better. Ten times better. Ten, why was they ten times better? Because it was God. It wasn't them. Amen. Because God imparted that to you. God will do that for you if you'll trust in God. He will give you favor and blessing. He'll give you anointing. He'll give you the ability to be, to rise above all those that are around you. It's your work. Yes. You can be Number uno, number one. You can be the best. Not because of you, because of God's favor and blessing on your life. If you'll serve him with all your heart and make stands for God. Amen. In all matters of wisdom and understanding. Found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. And Daniel continued even into the first year of King Cyrus. And then verse chapter 2, it talks about the king had a dream. Okay? He had this dream, and the dream bothered him. But he couldn't remember the dream. So he called all his magicians in and said, I need you to tell me the dream, and then tell me the interpretation of the dream. And nobody could do it. They said, well, tell us the dream, then we'll tell you the interpretation. He, he said, I can't, it just went from me. I can't do that. And then somebody said, well, Daniel knows it. Knows it. God uses Daniel to interpret dreams. So he called for Daniel. In verse 46. And so Daniel told him the dream and told him the interpretation of the dream. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar, verse 46 of chapter 2. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel. Now Daniel was just a man. But God gave him the interpretation. He not only gave him the interpretation of his dream, but he gave him the dream. Mm -hmm. And then when he gave him the dream, then the king remembered the dream. So he knew this really was God. He really was hearing from God. But he worshipped Daniel. Now Daniel was just a man. People get to thinking you're something if God uses you in a big thing. But it's just God. Give him the praise and glory because yes. he's the one that does the work. That's right. So King Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded they should offer an obligation of sweet odors unto him. And the king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth, 
It is that your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of secrets, seeing if thou couldst reveal this secret. He said, there's no way you could have known that. So your God must be some God, <laughs> some Lord that could just reveal this to you. Then the king made Daniel a great man, gave him many great gifts, and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors. In other words, he put him over all the governors, over all the wise men in Babylon. Then Daniel requested the king, and he, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But, but Daniel said to give the king. Isn't that something? And after that, then the king got an idea. He's going to bake this idol and make all the leaders in his, in his kingdom worship the idol. He built this golden calf. And he had, and they, and he, and he made the declaration that everybody, he's going to play this music, and all the leadership in his country would have to bow down to his idol when he, when he made this calf, golden calf. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were determined they weren't going to do it. They weren't going to bow down to his idol because they served the living God. So let's just skip down to uh, chapter, th chapter 3, verse 10. And this is when some people came